Hi everyone and good evening and welcome to this uh, virtual uh, talk and introduction to the University of Leicester. So my name is Jacob and I'm a lecturer in economics here and uh, the purpose of the, this uh, session is really to give you some information about what it's like to study economics at Leicester and um, I'm also joined by two of our current students Khadija and Asha who will uh, tell you a little bit after this presentation about the reasons that they chose to study economics at Leicester and how their experiences have been uh, so far. So you'll see there's a way that you can enter your ask questions um, so please feel free to ask any questions as it's going along and we'll, we'll come to the Q&A at the end. Uh, so it's really a, um, not just about um, me and us talking, you also should take the opportunity to ask any specific questions uh, you have, so we'll leave time for that at the end uh, for you. So just to give an overview, so if you are as an economics student uh, at Leicester, you'll be part of the business school. Uh, the business school in its current form came uh, was formed in 2016 and it brings together three separate departments, so we are as an economics student, you'll be in the Department of Economics, Finance and Accounting. And we have two other departments looking at things to do with marketing, innovation, strategy, and operations and work, employment, management, organizations. So together we are sort of a community of about 2,000 students, 150 academics who are all involved in studying and doing research around topics around business and the economy. Uh, so the two sort of maybe key biggest features or characteristics of the, the business school are the fact that we are uh, research driven and student centered with a lot of support. So I'll talk a bit more about these things, what they mean and what they mean for you if you come to, to study at the University of Leicester. Um, so when we have our in-person open days, we host them at our campus on Brookfield. So normally you will have a chance to go and have a tour around the campus, but here some pictures. So the business school has its own um, uh, individual campus so you'll have the main campus where you have a lot of the, the facilities the library but we also have this this Brookfield campus which is a big investment on the part of the university to give us a lot of sort of state-of-the-art facilities which you as economics and business school students will be able to benefit um, from so you can see in the lower picture there's a new lecture theater there's a lot of study spaces social spaces and also the the um, the uh, Bloomberg trading room that you can use to download a lot of financial markets data so you can use it to train yourself for any kind of if you're doing any interested in any kind of financial services career you use Bloomberg quite a lot so you can get some training on it while you're at university and also use it as part of your uh, research on your dissertation and projects etc. Um, so I mentioned that one of the aspects of the business school and the economics department as well is it's sort of research focus so one thing that's quite uh, special about uh, the course that we offer here is that you'll be taught by members of staff, lecturers, professors, all of whom are not just teaching but also doing research in their field and you know overall the, the quality of the research that we do is extremely high so that you know you'll be on a course which is quite dynamic in the sense that each year you'll not be just studying from the same textbook by people you know year in year out but you'll be taught by people who are writing new research, writing the textbook so that you'll constantly be sort of evolving in line with the research and you can ask your teachers, your lecturers, your seminar leaders, you know, how they'll be able to tell you exactly how they are, how they use these economic skills that they are teaching you in their research. And the department is 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 already large. It's, it's I would say it's it's uh, not the largest, but we have specialization across all of the main areas of economics and so some areas in which people are specialized in terms of their research and which also feeds through into some of the modules uh, we'll see later that you'll be that you can study here so some of those areas of expertise are behavioral economics game theory monetary economics and banking public economics um, and labor economics so some of you may already be studying economics at school at a level and other people may not be familiar with very familiar with the subject at all maybe just associated with certain careers for example so for anyone who's new to the subject, it's actually quite difficult to define what it is exactly, and you can really think about it either in terms of the types of topics that you study, and there are some examples here. So the textbook definition generally will be around scarce resources and how to all allocate those scarce resources, for example, in a market. Um, more specifically, there's a lot of interesting topics that you will study and learn to understand in a much more 
you know, in-depth level as an economic student to have, that have to do with sort of quite fundamental issues around how people make decisions on their own or in groups, how they make choices under risk over time and under strategic interaction, the role of culture and social norms in influencing choices, um, uh, why some countries are rich while others are poor, uh, how can we understand, stabilize and grow economies and what are long-term effects of Brexit? So there's really a long, a lot of interesting and you know relevant real world topics that you'll that you'll study um, uh, in the course of your degree here um, but in addition to that it's really not just the topics that you study but also the way in which you study them that makes an economics degree um, so valuable so at Leicester you'll be you'll you'll acquire an analytical mindset which will enable you to sort of study these quite complex problems in a very rigorous way so these the real essence of the degree is that you're able to take some complex social problem boil it down to its sort of key components analyze them using some mathematical modeling or some statistical analysis and then translate the results of that analysis or communicate the results of that analysis in some kind of writing or verbal you know report or presentation and these are really transferable skills which you'll take with you into any uh, you know career that that you might want to go into in the future so maybe you're already familiar but we we offer four um, sorry five uh, sort of main economics degrees here um, those are BC economics, economics and accounting, uh, business BC, business economics, financial economics and banking and economics and data analytics. So all of these uh, degrees, essentially, there's none, there's no sort of ranking of quality. They're all really good quality economics degrees and they all have in common that you all have the core training in the, the methods uh, of economics that you'll need to graduate, you know, as a, as a high quality economics graduate. The only difference between them, as we'll see in a bit of detail later, is how the modules that you'll be offered, the modules that you'll study will be slightly different in the later years of your course and will allow you to specialize a little bit in different areas of economics. So, for example, if you're studying economics and accounting, you'll have the chance to study some accounting modules in your second and third years of your degree. Um, and those accounting modules will give you some um, some exemptions, some accreditations with accounting bodies because almost the, the majority of our accounting modules are sort of at the same at the level required by those accreditation bodies so if you're interested in a career in accounting that could be an interesting option for you the business economics course will allow you to take some courses which are uh, taught by those other departments i mentioned at the beginning so they might you might be able to study you'll be able to study some um, topics like strategy or business ethics or corporate social responsibility which maybe fit more within those other areas of, of business studies rather than, than economics uh, it's the core economics financial economics and banking you'll have a lot more focus on on financial economic issues so corporate finance asset pricing uh, and financial intermediation and banks and then we have a new course which is just starting this year uh, around economics and data analytics, which has a slightly bigger focus on sort of quantitative methods around analyzing data, which is something which is in high demand with employers, ever more so with the sort of digital economy that we are living in. So this will train you a little bit more advanced or even more advanced um, statistical methods that you can use if you're going into a career where, you, where you'll be asked to analyze data and make some kind of predictions. So I would say all of the economics degrees already include quite a strong data analytics component, um, but this one just will allow you to specialize a bit more in depth in those areas uh, later on. So the BSc economics, the, the, the sort of straight economics, is then going to be focusing a bit more on the core economic concept and go a bit more in depth on some economic subjects like game theory uh, and things like that. So economics is a highly valued degree. Um, it's a great choice of a degree interesting you know and gives you a great range of transferable skills so what is it that makes um, studying economics at Leicester particularly um, worthwhile one thing is that um, I mentioned those five degrees on the previous page they they allow you to specialize um, a little bit in your second and third year as to which you know the types of modules that you'll be studying but they're actually all the same in the first year they all go through the same core um, modules uh, giving you the same sort of fundamental training that you need in economics in the first year so it means that actually you are able to switch between those programs up until the end of your first year you won't be committed to anyone to the program that you're admitted onto you still have the chance to switch if you want to um, i mentioned that it's a very research intensive um, 
department. So we have a lot of both experienced professors and also young sort of up and coming academics who are doing really cutting ed edge research and you'll really feel that you'll get a sense of that in the teaching that you get here, that they are not just teaching, you know, from the textbook, but giving you some insights into the type of uses to which they are putting those skills and the types of insights that they are getting from their research. So our um, graduates do extremely well um, after graduating uh, from, from an economics degree. So I've got former students working at the Bank of England who, who, who went on or who went on to study abroad in Japan, etc. So our students do extremely well, especially if you work hard, you know, get a great, get a good degree. You, you have a lot of opportunities um, to, you know, to have a great career. I mentioned the trading room, so we have some great facilities in our new campus. Careers and employability team is great, so we don't just invite you in, give you some lectures, uh, ask you to sit some assessments and then send you off. It's really about trying to help you become a well-rounded sort of graduate who's ready to go into the job market and, you know, compete successfully for a career in your chosen uh, field. So a lot of that is about sort of doing well in your studies first and foremost, but also doing a little bit of thinking ahead and planning, looking for internships for which you'll need to prepare your CV and look for opportunities. And the careers team is really there to help you plan and get organized in that respect so that you really you know, get the most out of your career. And a lot of sort of employability skills and career planning are actually sort of baked into the course without necessarily being, you know, you might not realize that you're doing it. So you'll prepare a CV in the first year of your degree, for example, as part of one of the modules that we'll mention in a little bit. So it's really about not just giving you the academic training, but also helping you to think ahead for your career. And, um, and the employability team are dedicated and to helping you with that aspect of it. Um, we have a couple of additional opportunities called the study abroad and the year in industry, which I'll talk about in a little while as well and a bit uh, briefly. So those would allow you to extend your degree from three years to four and you'd either go and study at one of our partner universities abroad, which can be in Europe or, you know, North America or Asia, quite far afield really anywhere you might might think of or to do a placement at um, in industry. So employers like um, British Gas, Deutsche Bank. Um, I think we've had uh, Lockheed Martin, all kinds of big employers, uh, which will allow you to be paid, um, get some work experience while you're at university and potentially you might be lucky enough to get a job offer while you're there as well. Um, so those opportunities exist for our sort of keen students as well. And really allow you to, you know, set yourself apart from 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 you know from a lot of the other graduates when you come to enter the you know apply for jobs etc and I mentioned all of our accounting modules are taught to a level which um, is recognized by the professional accountancy you know accreditation body so you'll be picking up if you are studying those accounting modules you'll be sort of on your way towards your professional accounting qualification as well so what is it that you might want to do with it with a um, degree in economics so I mentioned that um, you know, in terms of what is economics, we have those interesting topics that we can study that we will come across as economics graduates. But the other aspect is really how we are studying those topics. And it's that economics is social science. So it's it's social because we're fundamentally studying human beings. We're interested in, you know, markets and how people behave, um, competition in markets, all those kinds of things. Um, but it's also about the way in which we study those questions. So it's also you know, social science is a very scientific discipline in the sense that we use uh, mathematical modeling and statistical methods to try and prove results rigorously uh, and and derive statistically robust, um, you know, uh, or robust statistical results in a, in a in a very sophisticated way. So and those skills that that rigorous way and analytical way of thinking is really, you know, transferable to a whole range of different careers. So you'll find a lot of economic graduates go into some of the careers that you might traditionally may associate with economic banking, finance and accountancy. But really, the degree doesn't restrict you to one area or another. Really, economics is about how understanding social problems, including things like inequality and climate change and how we can put in place policies to improve those kind of problems. So we have we have a lot of students going into all different kinds of, of roles. So data analysis builds a lot on the quantitative skills that you learn. Other than that, we have the government economic services, financial services, all kinds of private companies in different sectors, but also nonprofit organizations, NHS, Bank of England, more consultancy, sort of regulatory type roles, and also, you know, economic business commentators in the media. You'll see, you'll see there's some <coughs> 
you know, media outlets, which <clears throat> which are very specialized in commenting on the economic news because it's a, quite a specialized field. So having that background in economics allows you to, <clears throat> excuse me, to really give the insight into understanding and explaining what the, the is going on in the economy. <clears throat> But like I say, there's many other careers that you can enter into as well. It's not restrictive in any sense. Uh, those skills will be uh, you can take into many different uh, career paths. So I mentioned um, <clears throat> that the first year of, of all those five degrees is common, and here's the modules that you'll be uh, that you'll be studying. So if you look across different <clears throat> economics degrees, you'll see that the structure of, of most of the degrees, the good quality ones, is quite similar. And like, like most good quality degrees in economics, we'll be giving you the sort of core training in economics that you'll need to build on in the later years. In microeconomics, the sort of decision making at the level of the individual. Macroeconomics, the sort of big picture uh, view of the economy, interest rates, employment, things like that. And also the quantitative skills in maths and statistics that underpin the kind of analysis that we want to do in economics. Uh, but in addition to that, we have this module, which is a bit unique to Leicester, which is contemporary issues in economics, finance and business, where you'll be taught by a different lecturer each week. And that lecturer will come in, professor or whoever, and tell you that about their area of research and, and tell you about this is the application, you know, which I'm putting these skills to and the kind of issues that I'm exploring in my research. So as well as learning the fundamental skills that you need, you'll also be sort of reminded of the ultimate purpose of learning these techniques and these methods and these um, these theories is that we can ultimately then in your later years and, and beyond as well, use those skills and apply those to study some real world problems. So we want to bring those real world applications into the degree in the first year alongside that fundamental training uh, that you need in those in those key core areas, micro macro and the quantitative methods. So I mentioned these are the same modules for all those five degrees because in a sense they're all and first and foremost economics degree, so you'll need that that same core training. It also means that you can switch between those 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 five programs at the end of the first year, having completed these these modules. As you go into the later years, second and third years, there's a whole range then of of core and optional modules which differ slightly across the five programs. So there are some modules which will pop up in in, in several programs. There'll be sort of some core microeconomics that you'll be studying in all of these courses. But other than that, here are just some examples of the types of modules that will pop up, uh, which you'll either have to or you'll have the option to sit uh, if you're on each of the different programs. So you can see economics sticks to core topics like game theory is a course I teach in second year. It's extremely useful about the fundamentals of or game theory, which is a large part of economics is essentially built on game theory. So it's great training for you know understanding almost any area of economics in particular, if you want to go on to further study. And then we have, you know, applications of your core economics to different areas, environmental economics, economic history, labor economics, development economics, behavioral economics. The business economics stream you'll see, you have, you'll have some of those economics modules as well, but these are some of the more business type options that you'll have. Business environment strategy, business data science, a bit more focused on also bringing in some business studies type uh, modules from the other areas of the business school. The data analytics one you'll see again, you'll be having options, public economics. There's a lot more options than the ones on this slide, many, many more. Uh, but the ones that are a bit more unique to this program are the methods for data analysis one and two and data analysis and practice the economic forecasting. A bit more depth on those quantitative statistical methods uh, as applied to economic data. The accounting one you'll see, there's more accounting options here. And then the financial economics and banking you'll see a bit more focused on topics in uh, in a, uh, finance, corporate finance, banking, money in central banking, derivatives, so asset pricing, things like that. So really the choice as to which degree might be the right one for you is a, is a first and foremost a question of which area you find most interesting. You won't be committed to anyone in your first year, as I said, and uh, you know the first year is also a chance for you to get to learn a little bit about more about what economics is and which 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 program might be the best fit for you. So for those who are um, less familiar with, um, you know, university life, so that the, the methods of learning at university are a little bit different from what you'll be used to at school. So some of you may have older siblings, other family at university. So the emphasis shifts a little bit more from learning in class to independent study, where you'll be attending lectures as a, as a large group, where you'll be sort of, the content of the course will be 
sort of convey to you and explain to you in quite a condensed number of hours, which you then go away typically and, and start work on independently outside of lecture hours. Uh, we have seminars, which are smaller group teaching events where you go and you essentially practice and apply the knowledge from the lectures and practice getting to the group, getting to grips with those methods and how you can use them to solve you know, economic problems. So really the emphasis is much more on, on doing rather than just listening. Um, so independent study it will account for a lot of, of the time that you spend. But as I'll say also on the next slide, it's um, you even though you are um, studying um, there's a focus on independent study, you'll never be on your own. There's a lot of support. If you have any any questions, there are office hours and a lot of other things that you can do to get help uh, with any area of your studies that you're struggling with. Um, so in terms of assessments, you'll be those modules I mentioned, each each module will have, you know, these ones, for example, each one of these modules will have an assessment um, scheme associated with it, depending a little bit on what the nature of the of the um, of the of the courses. So economic history, for example, will be more essay based. Game theory will be more problems based like um, solving and, ex and, and exams. Um, and each module will, will have a mixture of maybe a typical module might have an, a midterm test and then an exam or final assignment. And then you build up your your scores as you go through your through the years of your module that end up then so accumulating into your degree. So it's not one set of big exams at the end. Each module is assessed independently in that adds up and averages out, especially of your second and third years into your final degree result. So one other thing I mentioned right at the beginning was the, the support, so the student centered approach. So like I said, it's not just there'll be you'll be studying a lot more independently also with your classmates and in, 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 uh, um, but you will not be left on your own. So in terms of support, you have both the academic support. So you have a whole structure in place around helping you get to grips with your courses essentially you'll have your module leader um, who you can whose office hours you can attend and ask any questions your seminar leader if it's a different um, uh, person who you can attend the office hours and ask questions about the seminar questions above that you have a program lead so uh, and above that we have directors of learning and teaching and associate deans so there's a whole structure of staff who are there to ensure that your sort of learning experience is, is productive and there's a lot of events going on to support you with how to prepare for exams the library offers a lot of um, facilities for making revision plans help with maths anything like that so there's a lot of um, opportunities for getting any help you need with your course and in addition to that we ha also have a specialist team who are there to help with any well-being issues that you have if there's any issues outside of your academic studies that you might need help with then they are also there to give you some guidance and really make sure that any problems that are happening outside of class are being taken into account so that there are some we can put in place some 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 resolutions and it includes things like um, um, any special requirements you might have in terms of how you access learning materials or even the access to the learning spaces. The accessibility center is there to sort of keep a record and, and offer the right support for every student. So there's a lot of support both on the academic side and outside of class and the sort of well-being side as well. So I mentioned the, the careers and employability team, so I won't say too much more about that. We have a lot of events going on to help you prepare, get to get to meet employers and prepare yourself for, for a career. Um, uh, beyond that, there's a lot of opportunities. So the first two year in industry and year abroad, I mentioned a little bit, this, uh, student ambassadors, you know, may be the best place to talk about the opportunities that exist in universities in terms of student activities, student societies student ambassadors as they are, you know, the role that they have in social events. Uh, so I'll let them, I'll leave that um, for them. So just to briefly talk about the year in industry. So I said this, um, this would is one opportunity that you have. It would extend your degree from a three year to a four year degree and you would go on a, your placement between your second and third year. Uh, so you'd essentially, you'd be paid. It's like you're an employee. You gain a lot of experience. The students who go there, they really gain a lot from it, uh, develop a lot in that year and come back also quite you know good organizational skills good time management really helps also making the most of your third year and puts things in perspective that soon you know degree finishes and uh, gives you a bit of extra motivation to get the most out of your final year so to these year in industry places are not offered to, to everyone automatically so there's some work to be done by the students to find and apply for a placement but again you have a lot of support from the careers team and from a returning year in industry student who will act as a mentor. And this is, although it sounds like it's a both advantage and disadvantage, so you will not be guaranteed a placement, but on the other hand, 
It's the fact that their placements are offered on a much more selective basis and tailored to individual students. That means that the placement that the students who who who, who really go for it, um, that they get really high quality placements, get great work experience that leads you know, on to great, really helps them with their future career. So the students who actively pursue the opportunity, the chances are, are quite good to get onto a, a year in industry placement. The study abroad is, you know, like an academic exchange um, where you can study with our partner universities and a lot of European and also further field uh, universities. So for both of these things, it's going to be important that you're sort of planning ahead a little bit and um, your grades in the first year will be quite important. So just um, don't lose sight of these opportunities when you arrive. Um, they, they take a bit of forward planning, but can really add a lot uh, to your um, <clears throat> experience and to your CV, um, you know, as you're going through the course and then graduating. So the last thing um, to go through uh, is the, the practicalities. Um, so we, you apply through UCAS and we have some entry requirements. So these requirements are just there to make sure that the students that we let that, that start on the course are going to be equipped to deal with you know, the content that we are offering and that it's the right fit for them and they're going to be able to do well on the course. So the A-level grades are ABB and we ask for a GCSE maths at level five. Um, so it's not A-level maths that you, you, you don't need to have A-level maths before you start. We essentially ask for GCSE and then when I when we looked at those modules that you'll be covering in the first year, there were the two maths and the two statistics modules. So essentially, we we start from that point and then you know train you train you from from that level to what what we need to know. So we don't we're not mathematicians. We just use maths as a, as a one of the tools to study economic, real world, social kind of problems. Uh, so we are kind of probably more focused on a subset of mathematical techniques that we need to use quite a lot. And so we kind of develop them more intensively here as part of the degree. So many people enter with different types of um, qualifications and you know we look at each application on its own merit so if there's any questions specifically about entry grades or subjects uh, we can talk about them uh, at the end as well so that's really it so to summarize from my point of view you know somebody who teaches here i think uh, the degree that we offer is extremely high quality in the sense that the knowledge you will gain will be extremely useful for you in terms of going into a career and understanding how the economy works uh, and you know, developing those techniques that you need to thrive in the workplace in terms of being able to, you know, write reports, deal with data, uh, think clearly through complicated situations, um, uh, and it's a it's a it's a great place to to live and study as well. Um, so I think at this point I'll hand over to the first of our uh, student ambassadors, who is uh, Khadija, and. Um, I'll let uh, Khadija tell a little bit about why she chose to study at Leicester and how she, her experience has been so far. Hi guys, uh, so I'm Khadija and I have the reason why I chose University of Leicester was mainly because of the facilities that was available for me as an economics student. I always enjoyed doing economics. I even chose it uh, as my A levels and I wanted to continue doing that in university. So when I went around to have a look at the campus, I was told that the university has like devoted to a school of business, which they have uh, furnished and facilitized with a Harvard style lecture hall and everything. So I was really impressed by how the university had, uh, you know, focused on some of the subjects that I wanted to do. Also, another reason why I chose Leicester in general is because of the diversity over here. I know that there are so many societies and nationalities represented at University of Leicester. And for me, I really enjoyed the fact Aspects such as food or like people, since I uh, require to have halal food, for example, there are all the 
a majority of the food on campus is also providing for that. So that was another aspect that really impressed me about University of Leicester, that they do look at everybody that goes here and they want to update for all the students here. I think that's a really great um, point that University of Leicester has to offer for students. Also, uh, another thing about University of Leicester is how students can get involved uh, outside of their studies. Of course, the studies are really important, but uh, it's really great to have a balance when you study and also enjoy things outside. So University of Leicester offers hundreds of societies and they range from clubs, uh, sports clubs to chicken nugget society to Taylor Swift uh, admiration society. So I think it's and for me, I always loved to do badminton and sports and sort of. So I was really happy that they also had societies uh, similar to that, that I could not only play like social badminton, but also com competitive badminton. And if there is a society that's not there that you want to do, you can create one because all the societies are run by students. I think that is also one of the reasons why I really like that the university has a whole students union devoted for students. So they have help to reach out to when they want to during their studies. And I think another reason why I chose uh, economics here at Leicester was because of what the course was offering. I really enjoyed that um, the course was so diverse, like previously mentioned by Jacob, that there are so many options that you can choose from as your module. And uh, uh, especially in third year, since I'm a third year student, I really enjoyed that there were so many options for modules that I could choose and I could diverse, diversify my specification. And yeah, I think those are all the reasons for being here at University of Leicester. And that would be it from me and I will hand it over to Asha. Thank you. Um, one thing that really struck me uh, towards Leicester particularly was how diverse the course can be because um, as I'm in my first year and I haven't done um, econo economics or maths at A-level so I genuinely really liked how supportive they were through their maths modules and how much uh, support they really give you and how much they really try to make sure that you understand what you're doing and how to you kind of use those like mathematical skills um, within your like course and etc. I also really liked how in, after first year I can really transfer onto finance or data or etc. and I really do enjoy how much choice and variety I'm really given and how uh, yeah genuinely like I really do enjoy how much how flexible the course can be for me and what also attracted me towards Leicester was again like what Khadija said the, fle the diversity how much people kind of are different here, how much different ethnicities are here, how much different religions are here. And I also really enjoyed how Leicester was very much student driven. They do care about the students, there's there, there's well-being centers on sites. If you have really any problems, you can always turn to somebody and you can always be supported. And as well as like the career services, uh, that was also another thing that really attracted me, how even after university, you can still be supported through any career services throughout your like career if you need any help if you have any questions or anything like that which I feel like is definitely something unique towards Leicester that I really haven't seen in other universities where they really do push for the students to find jobs or to find anything during their year in the industry or just after university it's almost like as if you're kind of a student for life there 
and it really does follow you throughout even after you leave. Um, I think um, as a first year I really had no issues particularly and uh, in fact I really do enjoy my experience here. Um, as of yet I only received nothing but support and nothing but like kind of more understanding. I chose economics because I remember I discovered it randomly and I watched some YouTube videos and I really wanted to kind of do it as a degree but I was kind of unsure on whether someone like me would be able to do economics without, without having that background and I found that I don't really need that background because of course um, the university has just supported me and given me a lot of resources to help me and aid me like giving any revision, any math revision, including the seminars. The seminars I found particularly helpful where you can ask your lecturers questions within the seminars. You can really kind of just expand any of your knowledge or kind of fill in any gaps. Yeah. OK, I think um, maybe we can have a look at some of the, the questions. So there's maybe one that would be helpful for the for anyone listening is uh, could uh, could you tell us from a student's point of view what a typical day would look like as an economics student at Leicester? Either Khadija or Asha, maybe from a first year and a third year perspective. Um, I feel like a typical day for an economics student is really just going to your lectures and probably making some notes from your lectures and maybe asking any questions if you have any troubles and whatnot and um, I that's from um, what I've been gathering because I'm only a first year, but. Yeah. So for me, I think that the your typical day as a economic student kind of changes in your first year, then your second year, then your third year. From my experience, I think first year was an incredible experience because it was when I got when I first came in, I got to meet a lot of people and my timetable was also really full. So I would come in in the morning, go to my lectures, then I would be in the seminar. After that, I would be going to my next lecture and so and so would be like my weekly timetable. And then in year two, it was a lot more assignment and coursework based, which helped me build more of my understanding on my uh, degree itself. Also, it got a lot more busier in second year. And then in third year, it all became very less. So I have like two hour lectures and then one seminar the next day and then another lecture alongside with the seminar. So I think your the structure of your timetable kind of changes depending on which year you are, but they're all really enjoyable, I think. Thanks for that. Um, I think that should be very interesting for anyone listening. So one other question that comes up a lot is um, how studying economics at university is different. So from sort of my point of view as teaching, I think some people are worried they might be um, disadvantaged if they didn't study economics at school. So I don't think it's the case at all. Actually, I, I didn't study economics at um, school as well. So if you've studied A-level economics, you might come in and um, you might be familiar with some of the topics which um, which you'll be studying about, you know, consumer utility and budget constraints or profits. But uh, I think what's different at university is that the way in which we study those, um, those, those topics is a little bit different in that we don't want to just uh, understand the idea behind it, the, the sort of in, the intuitive idea, but also use some analytical techniques to make those um, concepts a bit more formal so that we can use them to analyze some more um, specific problems. So you'll see that the economics that you studied at, at uh, university will be a bit more underpinned by a sort of structure of maths and statistics, which is why we need those tools to be able to be a bit more precise about how we how we actually use those concepts to study economic problems. So if you've if you've studied economics, you may be familiar with the concepts, but be learning them in a new way. And if you haven't studied economics, you know, you'll be introduced to the concepts from the beginning in the way in which we want to use them for the purpose of, of, of our degree. 
But if anyone has any has any follow up questions about that, just feel free to pop them in the Q and A. And maybe otherwise, one final question: thinking about the range of modules we talked about for the student ambassadors. If you have in mind, uh, do you, can you remember any particular module, or you know, actually your first year, so it's still early days, but any modules that you particularly enjoyed or are particularly enjoying, or maybe looking forward to studying in later years. Oh, I really do enjoy the contemporary um, issues module where it talks about any issues in business, finance or economics. I really like the variety that they give, um, how much of and you can generally tell what like depending on the lecture that comes, you can tell their specialty in whatever they're in whatever they're speaking of. And I really enjoy the variety of topics, how much um, e economics or finance or business can really affect our day to day. And I really enjoyed seeing that in my lectures and seeing how everything really does interlink. For me, I am currently really enjoying a module called Development Economics, and that is about how there is differences in the GDP across uh, the income development and all of that across different types of countries and I really wanted to learn the reason why I chose that because I really I felt like it related a lot with economics and how some countries are developed and some countries are not and what are the reasons and causes behind that and what how can we really learn about what we can do to remove um, and fight against inequalities against all these different countries. So I think that's a module that I'm really enjoying right now. I also like that the examination is a, a mixture of math based and like essay type questions as well. It's not just an essay or just mathematical questions. I love that it's the balance of both. So yeah, that's a module that I'm really enjoying right now. Thank you both. So I think we're getting quite near the end. So I just want to say thanks to Khadija and Asha for your all your helpful input and thanks to everyone who's attended. I hope it was useful to hear a little bit about our degrees and hear about the student experience. So um, we'll leave it here. So please keep in touch with us. Maybe you'll have a chance to visit at an open day in person or an offer holder day in future um, and see around the campus and experience a little bit the things we've been talking about. Um, and I wish everyone well with your applications and your further studies. Have a nice evening.